Hello, I'm Jeff Gold, and welcome to this segment of Under the Microscope. Thanks so much for being with us today. Our special guest today is Dr. Guru Murthy, and Guru, as I understand you're called, uh, carries multiple titles. He's the director of UNMC's Mouse Genome Engineering Corps, and is also an associate professor uh, in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience in our College of Medicine. Guru, thanks so much for being with us today. And, uh, you know, as some in our audience probably know, but maybe not all, that you've recently been recognized for your work in what's known as Easy CRISPR. And, uh, and maybe you could explain to me better and to our audience a little bit of what Easy CRISPR is, and then we can talk about who cares, why is it so important. Thank you for having me here. So actually, I want to say that like, I work under the microscope all the time. And being under the microscope is kind of like a pleasure to me here. So I work on uh, something called genetic engineering. I'm a scientist in genetic engineering. What does that mean? So, so uh, we all know, like uh, whether it is scientists or students or clinicians or general public, we know that like there are something called genes, yeah. and genes control our body function, right. like breathing, or like touching, or walking, sure, or everything. Or does, we everything do. Yes. So how did people know that like genes control our function? So like. For example, there are some genes that go bad in our body, like uh, P53, it causes cancer. Mm -hmm. And like sickle cell anemia, or like a, a Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So and these, many, yeah, many, others. many, many others. So how did, uh, like, let's step back about 30 years ago, when genetic engineering was not there. How did people, or scientists, come to know the function of P53 gene? So how did they know is that by taking that gene out from a small organism like yeast, or drosophila, or a fly, or a mouse, and study whether it causes tumor, or also like sickle cell anemia, you just take it out and see whether it causes a disease. So this is genetic engineering is a technology where you can take out a gene or put a new gene in a small organism and study how that functions. So if you, if you want to. Uh, Super. Yes. Well, so with that background, yes. uh, what is easy CRISPR? Sure, yeah. So uh, genetic engineering, as I said, it's a very, very complicated technology. It used to take about two years, three, three years to make one knockout mouse, like for example, knockout P53 mouse. Now. Easy CRISPR is a technology where when you make a cut, you want to insert a new copy of gene into that. For example, if you want to correct a sickle cell anemia or if you want to correct P53, you want to put a wild type copy that is a normal copy of the P53 into the uh, cut site. So how do you do that? Like what people with the uh, earlier genetic engineering technologies, people thought that like using double standard DNA, because DNA is like double helix, sure. you make a cut and then you put a double standard DNA, it will go inside, but P mm. it, it was not the case. What we thought is that when the double standard DNA is cut, it is looking for a single standard end. And we added single standard DNA. And then why don't we try this single standard DNA? And it is just a history now that we, we call this as easy CRISPR, which stands for efficient additions with single standard DNA inserts mm -hmm. CRISPR. And I thought they called it easy because it was easy. And honestly, it was very easy because like within within a span of six months, we had like gene number one, two, three, four, like more than a dozen gene worked. And then when we published, when we submitted this to very high profile journals like Cell, Nature, and Science, reviewers were thinking that this is too good to be true and we couldn't publish Publish it very quick, and then we published in the, uh, another. Journey. So, are there specific diseases that yes. are going to lend themselves to either earlier diagnosis, prevention, or treatment? as a result of this technology? Absolutely. Actually, see, after we published uh, Easy CRISPR, there were a couple of people who collaborated with us asking, hey, can we try this for CAR T therapy? Mm -hmm. you, you must be sure. knowing that CAR T for therapy cancer. is for cancer, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we collaborated with a team in UCSF where they demonstrated that using Easy CRISPR, you can engineer T cells from patient and then introduce them back into, say, like mouse and cure their own cancer. So this would make the whole CAR T therapy process what? easier, Easy, faster, yes, yes. and possibly even more affordable? Absolutely, yes. Well, that would be really powerful. That is one example, and there are a few other examples. So there is another uh, thing called like uh, pediatric uh, diseases. Like if you want to uh, take a patient's uh, samples and uh, in the in vitro you mutate those uh, cells and then put them back into the patient. Mm -hmm. And this was also proven in a recent paper in Nature Communication just like a month ago. So, so it's really exciting, and it's great to have you here because th this be is clearly uh, an important technological breakthrough as we're 
so focused on, you know, what's known as precision medicine, targeted therapies, yes. the ability to be able to do rapid uh, techniques of this nature, and that can be brought out in multiple disease states is, is, is critically important. Yes. Well, I want to congratulate you. I know you've received a lot of recognition, Thank you and we're much. so pleased to have you part of the Med Center team Thank here. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for being with us today. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today on this segment of Under the Microscope.